Good morning, and welcome to this morning's briefing about suicide, which has been sponsored by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I'm Eric Marcus, and I'll be moderating today's discussion. Um, I was 12 when my dad died. He was a World War II veteran. And three years ago, my sister-in-law took her life on election day. I'd first like to acknowledge that this is a subject that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, including, <laughs> including me. What the research shows is that during the course of our lifetime, more than 80% of us will lose someone we know to suicide. About 20 or 25% of us will lose a family member, and between 60 and 65% of us will lose someone that we have some contact with. I'd like to ask all of you four questions, and I'd like a show of your hands if the answer is yes to any of them. Who has lost a family member or friend to suicide? Who knows someone who has killed themselves, like a neighbor or colleague? Who knows someone who has attempted suicide? Who has ever attempted suicide? If you can answer yes to any of these questions, please raise your hand. Keep your hands up. There are more than, just generally, there are more than 36,000 suicides every year in the United States, and it's now leading, the tenth leading cause of death. Now, why? Why did this happen? I have worked with thousands of survivors. I've never met a single one who wasn't grappling with that. Something else that was going on in his environment, there's so many different factors that contribute to a young person's ultimate decision to end their life. Um, bullying could not have been the only thing that drove him to person in the army kills himself once every, there's somebody once every 36 hours. There are more deaths from suicide in the army than in from combat. There's lots of things um, Congress um, can do on that front. He's working with the school on, you know, more, more comprehensive solutions to the problem um, and really addressing it head on and not just waiting for it to go away. Um, it's not a good thing not to talk about them as much as, as, as difficult as it may be. And you want to look at the total picture. You can't just look at what's happening to him or her in the moment. You really have to know the family history and of depression or mania or some other alcohol or drug abuse. What difference can the people in our audience today make in the lives of people who have lost a loved one to suicide and in preventing suicides? You have to work on maintaining uh, some kind of uh, increased funding for mental health workers. Um, and know that you know, suicide is preventable. Um, really encourage hope-seeking behavior. Um, help, help them realize that it's okay to have these feelings and there are ways that you can get help and feel better. My advice is really very simple. The way that we reduce the stigma around suicide is one conversation at a time. So if you find yourself in a situation, whether it's professionally or personally, where you know the person you're talking with has lost someone to suicide, ask them two very simple questions. What was their name? And tell me about them. Almost all of us here have lived through the suicide of someone we know or someone close to us. And we have gone on. We have found a way to live. That there is life after suicide for those of us who are left in the wake of the suicide, as tragic as it is and as heartbreaking. There is a way to turn that experience into something positive and to help other people, whether it's help, helping to prevent suicide or helping other people who live through this terrible experience go on. And from your point of view, it's something that affects your constituents and that increasingly there is a, a groundswell of support at a grassroots level to bring about change and we'll be hearing from your constituents going forward if you haven't already, it's an issue they care about deeply. Thanks so much.